let's say you win your primary, you're elected to Congress, and you are able to craft legislation that's perfect, that will get passed. What would that look like in your opinion? Because I think that people are branching out. Liberals, at least some liberals, are trying to run away from that instinct to just opt for incremental reform. That's clearly failed. Incrementalism, I think, isn't going to suffice this time. So we're talking about defund the police. We're even entertaining abolitionist arguments. But for you, legislatively speaking, how do you root out racism from the institutions that it's embedded in? Is it is it able to be reformed? Like, what do you, what do we do in terms of like a policy approach to this? Because it's such a huge thing. I don't know where to begin. Okay, so let's unpack a few things that you said there. So when we talk about individuals and being racist, I don't think individuals can be racist, and I'll tell you why. Everybody has a prejudice. We prejudice just means to prejudge. You have a prejudice when you walk into a buffet and you look to see which food you're gonna get because it looks good or that looks bad. That's a prejudge. Racism is a system. And racism is, like I said, when I say, when I say it's a system, I mean it controls masses. So when we talk about racism in America, I'm not talking about, you know, the, 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 the Kathy that calls the police or the Karen that doesn't want the black person to barbecue. That's them being prejudiced and ignorant. But the racism comes in to the fact that she can call a police system that she knows will do something or have a, a adverse effect on a black person. That's the system that we need to deal with. Everybody has prejudice. People can be taught and, and learn to get rid of their prejudice. But racism as a system has to be dismantled. You can't reform racism because police have body cameras now. They're still beating people. They're still killing people. They're, they're gassing protesters peaceful protesters on the damn news. So a camera is not the way. You can't retrain them because the system is set up. Policing in this country literally stemmed out of slave catchers who would go and capture escaped slaves and bring them back. So the entire system is corrupt. And if I could craft a perfect piece of legislation, I don't think there is such thing as a perfect piece of legislation because legislation has to evolve with the times of the day. But if I could craft some legislation right now, we need to demilitarize our police. You know, police officers are using the same exact equipment that I used when I was in Afghanistan and Iraq. Like literally, this I could get inside one of those big ass up armored vehicles, flip all the switches, turn it on and move it because I've driven it a million times. They're using the same vehicles in Iraq. Not only that, they have qualified immunity, which allows them, just imagine this. My wife is a teacher. She, in New York City, you get a teaching certificate, a license to teach. Do you think she would be able to be on the job if she had 10 complaints of, of misconduct or 10 complaints of abusing a child? No lawyer could have, you know, 20 years worth of contempt citations against them. They would be disbarred. She would lose her license to teach. No police officer who is a public servant would should be able to allow to, to commit acts of violence against people and be shielded because of this silly ass law on the book. So we need to end qualified immunity. We need to demilitarize that police. We need, we need to end broken windows policing in communities of color. A lot of folks like to say, well, black communities have more crimes. They have more crimes because they have more police. If all you have is a hammer, everything looks like a nail. The police officers have to be justified some way, so they arrest people to justify their existence. It's a never-ending cycle that reformation is not going to change. It has to be dismantled. So there's no one perfect piece of legislation, but there are things that we can craft and put into bills. We need to tackle this stuff now. Like right now, New York City just passed an anti-chokehold bill. That's the problem, that you have to pass a bill to tell an institution not to choke people to death. That's that's a summation of the problems in the fact that you have to pass an anti choco bill. How about we we reduce the number of police so we don't so and that money can go to mental health services. That money can go to the, to diversionary programs. That money can go to, to outpatient programs. That money can go to mental health services. So we're not using our police officers and police force as you know. A, a end all to all these other social things that we should be doing. We're not using our jails in lieu of mental health facilities. We're not using police officers as immigration officers, all these other things. And when we talk about police, we don't just have to think about, you know, 911 NYPD. We have to also talk about the Department of Homeland Security. We have to talk about ICE and immigration customs and customs enforcement. We have to talk about all these other 
pseudo quasi police agencies that the state, the government has to police people in all forms and fashions. So we don't just need to look at NYPD. We need to look at all of this damn stuff with the Patriot Act and the National Defense Authorization Act and all these things. Yeah. And I'm glad that you said that, because I feel like if you just try to reform the existing police as it is, you're not really getting to the root of the problem because it doesn't address the underlying issue that our response as a society has collectively been just to throw more police at whatever the situation is. So rather than addressing the homeless crisis with housing, we just throw more police on it. We, you know, criminalize homelessness. So it, it's like we've had this one default setting to where, oh, there's crime, there's these issues, X, Y, and Z. Well, that just means we increase our police budgets even further. We throw more police at it. And I think that people are starting to wake up and realize this isn't like, it's not acceptable to have a one-size-fits-all solution to all of a city's problems. That doesn't make sense, right? Like, we no. we have to be nuanced. We have to acknowledge the fact that mental health care requires, uh, or mental health crises require mental health care. You know, um, it doesn't require police officers. Domestic violence isn't something that you can solve with policing. These are, these are issues that are complex. And so I, I'm glad that we're actually talking about going beyond reform. It is a little bit frustrating that, you know, you see Democrats such as Joe Biden, Jim Clyburn, try to co-opt the language, say, you know, I don't support defund the police, but I want to reimagine the police. That can mean anything. <laughs> and it's not necessarily, yeah. I mean, it, it might be reimagined to even what maybe his reimagination has given them more money and more power. Joe exactly. Biden did give us the crime bill, so I don't trust Joe Biden on policing at I, all. <laughs> you know, you, you, you know, you know the, you know the thing, thing. You're getting nervous, man, man.